Hi all, so I'm coming back today to do a what's in my bag video. So um, I'm oftentimes asked, you know, like how do I journal um, on the go? Um, what do I, you know, a lot of times when you're doing your art journal and you're beginning to, um, you know, try to work all of the various supplies that you need around trying to do it daily. And you know, guys, I'm a big believer in, doing your journal every day, 365 days of journaling. So um, I had to figure that out for myself as well because you're not always in your studio. Sometimes you don't really want to be in your studio. Sometimes you may want to sit down with the family, look at a movie, relax, you know, maybe go out on your deck, have a glass of wine, but everything's in your studio. And that was my problem. So I solved it by getting myself a portable art bag now most of everything in here are duplicates so i have separate things or similar products in my studio the things that aren't duplicates that i want to be able to carry easily then i've put them into bags or containers that make it very easy for me to carry them so i'm going to show you guys all of that i'll break it down exactly how it is that i do journal on the go primarily i use this one around the house or if I'm heading out and I know I'm going to be journaling, I may be going over with friends, I may be going traveling, I'm going on the road, I'm in the car. And so I just grab, this bag is ready to go and it can just go right in my trunk and keep it moving. And I know that for the most part, I'll have everything that I need. Alrighty, so let's get ready. Let's get down here and focus in on what I have. So first of all, what I should say is let's talk a little bit about the bag that I'm using. So I, I was looking for a bag that would be compact, you know, kind of easy to carry around, but that had enough compartments and enough places for me to put all of my stuff so that um, it would be in one easy kind of contained way. So I found this bag at Joann's. So if you have a Joann's or uh, you know, Hobby Lobby, I guess, or someplace like that where there's a sewing section because actually I got this in the sewing section at Joann's. So it's designed to be able to carry your sewing supplies around, probably knitting, darning, um, that kind of thing. Um, needlework. It has long straps, which I like these straps because they're pretty long. So it means, you know, it can get above the height of the stuff that I have in here. And a um, lot with lots of pockets. Now this one, and I'll show you, it has front pocket here, and just about everywhere. There's, it's like a bucket bag. There's pockets all the way around. And there's a zipper pocket in the back. This is where I keep a lot of my tapes, which I'll show you guys all of this. And then it has three compartments inside. So you can see that there is a section. And when I'm, I'll show you when it's empty between. So these are two separate sections. And then the third one is the big section that goes all the way across, which makes it nice. So this was, I think this bag was like $24.99, so say $25. But I got one of the jo Joann's 50% off coupons. Yeah, they're always running 50% off uh, promotionals. Um, so, or if I know Joann's also takes Michael's and Hobby Lobby. So if you have a Michael's or a Hobby Lobby 50% off, Joanne will take it as well, even if they're not running a 50% off promotional themselves. So then it made the whole thing like $12.50, which I really like that price. So just remember, they seem like they carry these all of the time. I know I have other students have asked me this um, and they've been able to find them. So this is pretty much a standard thing, maybe different colors and different patterns. But so just know, get it for at Joanne's at 50% off. So let's get going. What do I have in my bag? Well, let's start with the front pocket here. Let's do it like this. So in this pocket is where I put all of my washi tapes. So like I said, I have washi tapes and duplicate. And generally, I kind of put the tapes and they, they are nice because they sort of lay right across. You can see they just sort of line up right in there, which is nice. Um, and, you know, these can be changed out. A lot of these are duplicates, but I'll normally put the ones that I want to use quite a bit in here. And then um, sometimes, you know, I'm switching them out. And, you know, it's very easy just to move them back and forth when you want different ones in there. But it's nice because they all will just roll in there nicely and you get a good amount. See, I still have space to put more 
in there. So I keep all my washi tapes rolled up in there. This pocket here has another set of washi tapes that I haven't taken out of the package yet. So a lot of times new stuff that I haven't opened yet, I'll just stick in one of these spare pockets here. So this is a very thin washi tape. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them in here. And I get these at the dollar, at the dollar tree. But I like them because there's some neat random patterns in there that I like working with. And these are the real thin ones. So I find my Dollar Tree already always has those. I normally put extra pens on this side, my pencil sharpener, just to keep my pencils straight. Um, over here, I have a really fine little paintbrush. And I don't really do, I mean, I'm not obviously, now if I'm going to do jelly printing on the road, then I'm going to stick my plate down in here. But obviously I'm not sitting in front of the table in front of the television or something doing a jelly print. But let's say you want to go out on your back deck and you want to work out there, certainly you can stick it down in here. Um, so it just sort of depends. But mostly this is when I'm just doing my daily journaling and I just want to keep it going, but not necessarily be in the studio. So I put various pen... Um, uh, paint brushes in here. Let me see. Do I have anything in this pocket? This pocket is probably empty because I'll try to keep a, a pocket or two empty so I have places to stick things when I get new things. My scissors are normally right there. And then I have like my extra clips. I'll just clip on the outside of the bag as I need them. This pocket has, I like these clips as well. These big sort of coated, plastic coated clips. I get these from the Dollar Tree as well. And I think five or six come in a package. And I buy two or three packages at a time because I use these things like crazy. And I'll show you how I use them. But I'll show you the packaging so you can find them right at the Dollar Tree. And sometimes they're in the check at the checkout or back where the um, school supplies and things are. And I think five of them, six come in a pack. And I use these things for everything. So I'll keep my extra stuff down in here. What else do I have in here? Uh, of course, my scraper, my paint scraper. So when I'm working on my page, I put paint down, you know, I just, you know, smooth it down the surface. So that's in there. And then just some extra book plate labels that I printed a while back. And um, they're, they're labels, they're stickers. So sometimes I'll pull something like this off if I want to um, embellish a page or write something in there. So I just have some extras there. That's what's in that pocket. And then in this pocket is my book binding thread and needles. So if I want to sew up a quick little journal like I showed you guys before in the videos, um, that's in this pocket. And I keep an extra little uh, cork, wine cork, and for stamping, making circles. If I want to cut a shape or something in here, I have a few of these stuck in here. Okay, so that's... That's going around, back around to the front. So that's what I currently have in my pockets. And basically, that's what stays in the pockets. So let's say I'm working on, a lot of times, either, these are the journals I'm working on. Either I'm working on this one, this 365 one. This is like a travel journal. So when I'm traveling somewhere like Australia, when I went recently went to um, uh, England, that's where... This goes, so this may be a journal that maybe I'm coming back after my travels and I have some extra things like tickets or stubs and stuff I want to put in there. Then I know I got everything here I need. Or oh, I know one of the things that's not in here that I took out, but I have it right here. I can put it back here on my side. I knew something was missing. My Yoohoo glue stick. So I normally keep that stuck in one of these side pockets, the glue stick. That's a must. Okay. And then also I have my Midori, which I call the Art Dory. Um, so this is where I keep a lot of my notes here. And then back here would be where I have a section that I put in here that I actually put art journaling paper. I put really good paper in here. And this is where I do my, I do my daily journaling in this type of format as well. And I actually make these. Uh, they're made like on the Midori format, but I, I sort of like different leathers, so I create these. And um, if you're ever interested in any of these, you can 
message me because I can make you one. Um, but anyway, that's, and I love this. This leather has really worn really well. This is about three or four years old and it was just so yummy. I love it. So those are the type of journals I may have with me when I'm um, working on this. And all of these sizes obviously could fit so easily right in my bag. So that makes it nice. Okay, so let's start this pocket. Of course, you know, I have to have my trusty parchment paper. Oh, I have my parchment paper. And because uh, I'm using that a lot um, in between, like if I'm working on this and I don't want um, there to be any over paint on either side, then of course I'm a tear. And I normally keep some used ones in here, but I tear it and I put one on this side so that while I'm painting and stuff, can you guys see this? I get a little washed out. When I'm painting, it it just protects these other pages from getting colors on it that I don't want. So that's one of the ways I use this parchment paper when I'm journaling, as well as I use it um, for the monoprinting, printing, as you know. But I also will use it on this board right here. So I normally keep a pad of some type of drawing paper or watercolor paper or something in here. And then the back of it is where I'll put, lay this down so that when I want to glue, so I'm, it, it kind of gives me a ready kind of little desk or table thing so that when I'm gluing to put in my, my journal, I have a hard surface. You know, sometimes you're sitting someplace or if you're sitting on the couch and looking at a movie, you don't necessarily have a table there. So I always make sure that I keep one of these tablets in here and then it has a nice hard back on it. So I have my paper and I can also glue right on here. That's to the side. Okay. So also in that same pocket that the parchment is my little cup full of pens. So I have some gold sort of writing pens, you know, like the gold paint. And I love, um, I love fountain pens. So this is a series that I got online on, I'll leave the link. I'll have to link some of this stuff. Um, and they're fountain pens and they write really, really good. They're a uh, petite pilot, the Japanese, and they come in all of these yummy colors. And I really love working with these. So it allows me to, um, I'll let this focus. It allows me to write um, in my journal with various colors and have reliable ink that's not gonna dry up on me. So I love these. And then the other ones I have down here, they came in a, a group as well, They're all different colors. And I don't know, <clears throat> put these back in there. Who these are by, which is, I think I was at like Michael's or somewhere like that and picked these up. But they're all different colors, they're gel pens. So they're mini gel pens and they come in all different colors and they really write nicely as well. So I like the, the small, the fact that they're mini. So look for things that are small like this and then just find yourself a cup. You can put them in there and they really do work easily. What else do I have in here? I have um, my lead for my leaded pencils. I have a Pentel leaded pencil that I'll use. I have extra leads in here. And then I have my, my all for book binding where I use to make holes in the paper to um, sew the book. So I always keep that in here. If I'm doing any sewing, that's ready to go. So that's all I had in that pocket. That was quite a bit. I got all that pocket. Then this is my, my other pencil case and I carry this with me. So a lot of these pens in here, I can take this whole thing and just throw this in my purse along with my um, journal. I just want to sketch or, you know, do some um, intuitive writing or whatever. And this has all, I got tons of pencils in here. So let's look. So here, these are more the longer versions of the short ones. 
But this one I carry with me. So these are all gel pens here. Let's see if you guys can see it. These are all gel pens. Um, these are gel pens in colors, pilot. Most of these I'll get at Walmart. Um, all of these are just, you know, the various color gel pens. And see, these are water. I love these. Um, Derwitt Ink Intense. Nice watercolor. Um, put it that way so you can see what this is. They're expensive. They're about 4 or $5 a pencil, but they really are worth it. I love these. <clears throat> and here's my... So we'll put that back in there. This is just miscellaneous pencils. You know my favorite um, Uniball Signo White. I, guys, I've showed that before and shared links for those. Those I get on Amazon. I keep a small Exacto retractable exacto in here so if i have to cut anything um it's easy just make sure you if you're traveling on a plane take this out <laughs> um this is like a little <clears throat> gym holds it's like a a paper cutter it what it does is it roughs up the edges so if you want to rough up the edges of a piece of paper you just kind of drag it um let's see if i have something here Course, you never have anything on you, but you just kind of drag it through like this through the on the blades, and it'll like rough up the edges to give you a rough edge. So, I like that. I keep that in my pencil case, and um, just more miscellaneous things. Keep a fingernail file that's just for practical purposes in case a nail breaks. <laughs> so I'm always doing art, and of course, a nail I need to do something. This is a calligraphy brush pen. It's the Japanese one I got when I was in Australia, I believe. And, but I always keep one of these felt tip brush pens. Um, love those. So that's what's in here. And then I always, always, always have my, my water color brush. So you can see where the well is filled with water. Let's see, can you see this? Well, I can see it's water in here. So, um, and then, so it's great for activating watercolor pencils or any kind of inks and what have you when you're working. So I like to keep all of this in this one because these I don't carry with me um, unless I pick a color or two sometimes, but this I always have in here like that. So I can either have it down here in my case or it's easy for me to pull it out and take this and and take it with me in my purse or something, but yet it's still all contained. On this side, I keep two rulers. I like this Westcott deco edge ruler. So it's it's a pyramid sort of shape. So you have two different type of decals, a fine one and a more rough one on this end, and then you have your measuring ruler here. I love, love, love this. So I keep that in here. And then I keep a nice, um, metal ruler in here as well it's a nice no more than 12 inches so it's a nice height but whenever i need to cut something with my exacto knife or tear an ed a raw edge of a paper uh, that i'm working on i have it so i have that in there and then i just keep some pretty like paper towels or these thick kind of dinner napkins in here because you know you inevitably need to wipe something up so that's in there i keep a jar for water just in case I want more water or I'm working with my brushes I don't want to go running around looking for some kind of container to put water in I just want to know I have it so I just keep this little empty jar in here and normally I just keep um, this paper rolled up in it like that and um, I keep some skewers these little wooden skewers because I like painting and doing mark making with them and moving paint around so I keep a few of these in here and normally that's how I keep that in this little jar and um, what else do we have down here? Now, this is some more of my Midori stuff. So, um, that's just a color card. So, for this, if I want to add more tabs or if I want to section things off, I just keep a few. These are the bands to 
spam on Midori. So if you're if you're um, know what the Midori thing, system is all about, which is this Midori. These are tabs. Then I keep some of my backup stuff up in here, some of the cards um, for putting in them. So I keep backup stuff there. Alrighty, in that pocket. Now, in this big pocket, one of the things I keep is I have this really miniature cutting system. I got it a number of years back with one of those, um, like, what do you, it was a system that was called, uh, I forget what it's called now, Classic Moments or something, but it was for scrapbooking. And I had gotten it with that stuff, but I love this little, straight because it's like a little guillotine it cuts nicely small things it also has a drawer in it right here Try to get it open. and so i keep backup stuff up in here this is just like a a tape like a adhesive you know tape to put um glue on the back of there's some more Little um, felt tip pins in here. You can put whatever you want in here. So I like this little system because it really makes cutting straight edges very easy, but it's very compact. And because it has a drawer, I can use it for other things. Got to have baby wipes. Necessity because we don't have water here. We're working. And plus baby wipes, not only is it a great way just to clean up your hands and clean up surfaces and wipe off glue, but it also is good when we're working in our journal and we want to remove paint and get, you know, thinner coats of paint. Of course, you know, you can use baby wipes to do that. So that's a must. And then down in here, you'll also see I have some paints. So this is just a, just a box of craft paint. So this is just really when I want to add some color to my page and my journal. And I move these around. I have different colors in here. Uh, sometimes I'll have my golden paints in here. It doesn't matter, but when I got it, it had this little box. And I like this box because it, it, it's a good way to keep them all. And then I keep my credit card in here, the one that I use for moving paint on the page as well. So that fits nicely right down in there. I also have another black that I like. This is one of my favorite blacks. I got this in Australia too. This is like a Japanese acrylic paint. I haven't been able to find it here, but when I do, I'm going to buy it by the tons. And I think I will put it up on my website because you guys will really, really like that paint. But it's not the easiest to find. But um, this is what I did when I was doing these. And I'm, I'm swiping the black and then writing on it. See that? That was the black I used. And see how black it is? It is like, like ink black. I love it. So if I'm doing that kind of thing and I want to use my white pen and then this is all of my ephemera and stuff that I use to collage with so there's old tea bags there's like little packaging things photographs um various old prints and bits and pieces old dictionary paper and all kind of stuff like bits and pieces paper towels you know just all kind of little things that I constantly pull together to do my collaging with. And here's an example of where I use one of those big clips. These clip clips are so ideal because it doesn't mess up the work, but it keeps it all in a nice bundle. So you have all these pieces, but they're not like everywhere scattered all in your bag. You know what I mean? You can like, and I change these out often, depending on what I'm using or what I'm doing, I will um, just do different ones. And then this one, same thing using clip just so I have my extra papers I want to use um, anything I'm writing on this is some handmade paper that I dyed with avocado to get this really pretty I don't know if you guys can see the color really well but I don't think you can I don't know where to put it you can see it but anyway these are some old jelly prints here jelly prints um these are some larger, just background, wall texture kind of jelly prints. I'm trying to get it so that you guys can see the color. Um, and these are just all, you know, jelly prints that 
just have bits and pieces on them that I'm gonna tear up and cut back into my work. So like a lot of those waste pieces that you have or it has some interesting texture, but you're not gonna take it into um, um, an actual art piece. Then I keep those, you know, clipped together and um, in my bag. So I keep a couple of piles of those going at any given time. So whatever you wanna use to collage with or work back in your book, and then that's pretty much it. Um, this is the Midori stuff that I showed you. And here we are, we're empty. So that's what it looks like inside. So as you can see, I got a lot of stuff in this, um, in this little carry bag. And so it makes it, you know, really easy for me to carry all my stuff. So I wanted to, do this video to finally show you guys how I carry my stuff around and how I use it um, on the go. And if you just keep this pack, you can see where it's not like I have a whole lot of anything here that's not easy to have in duplication. And I have found that if there is something to be said for duplicating some of the work that of some of the supplies you need for your various workspaces, so you don't always feel like you've got to be in the studio or you have to be wherever your workspace is. I don't have a workspace, so I can't get started on my journaling or I can't be consistent because I don't have a space. Well, if you just put a bag like this together, you can see where you don't even have to have a workspace in your house. This is your studio and you can just keep it packed and whatever you want to work, you can just sit down at, you know, your kitchen table or, you know, out on your deck and work. And the nice thing about it is that everything as you're working, you can just be putting right back in your bag. So you don't have a cleanup mess. So when it's ready to stop, like you don't have all this stuff everywhere you gotta clean up because basically you have these things in clips. This is all clipped back together. Bam, it goes right back in here. So all those little odd pieces are not all over the place. You just stick them right back in your bag. You know, you have some kind of packaging like this or just get like a little um, plastic container or something where you can put all your paints in so you can pick them all up, stick them right back in here. What I find is keeping things like, like here, my pens, they're all in like a little cup. I can stick it right back in there. So if you kind of think in terms of putting like containers inside of your bag, it makes it so much easier to work and to clean up. Cause literally you just take all this stuff out, set it up. You're working as you're doing different color pens and what have you, you're putting it back into your pen case or back into your um, jar. You have all of your washi tapes and stuff or in a particular place so you can pull them out. And then when you're done, you know, you're just, you know, you're popping it back into your, your um, pocket. And so you really can work and this becomes like your little studio box. And that gets rid of a lot of your concerns about cleanup or time or when I'm done, the kids are in, I got to fix dinner. Now I got stuff all over the, all over the kitchen table or whatever. I hear lots of different things. So this is how I've resolved it. So this is what's in my bag. I love this. So I hope that this has helped you guys really sort through. These are the most important things for me, even like these metal rollers that can be three to $8. I, I went into my Dollar Tree and they had them for a dollar. These are really nice metal rulers. I must've bought about seven or eight of them. Cause then that way I can have a nice ruler that I can have in my bag. I can have one at my desk. I can have one in my studio. You know, I can have them different places and don't feel like I've got to spend $30 on metal rulers in order to have them four or five different places. And so that's also why I'd encourage you. I find a lot of um, art supplies at the Dollar Tree specifically. They seem to get a lot of odd lots in. And so when you see something that you think you can use, at least buy two or three of them. Don't buy just one. Because then that way you can put a system together like this and know that you have enough in various places to work with. All righty. So I think that's everything. I hope I've addressed most of your questions about how I journal on the go and how I can um, more easily find a place um, that maybe not a, a traditional studio in order to do your work. All righty. Well, thanks a lot, guys. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. If this helps, take care. Bye-bye.